Hello, it's Richard Bauer here, Yamaha brand ambassador at Rimmers Music in Edinburgh. <laughs> Today we're going to look at recording your playing on a Yamaha digital piano. Now pretty much all of the models that we make from entry level right through to the, the very very top end avant grand models have a recording facility on board. We'll look today at not only how to record but also why you should record. Um, we'll look at the way that it will help you to practice and we'll also look at the way that it will help you to create an archive of your playing which is really useful if let's say um, you're going through a little bit of a downer on, on, your, on your playing and you think oh, I'm not really improving, I've not really improved for uh, three four weeks. Um, a really nice thing then is to go back and listen to a recording that maybe you made six months ago and you'll hear then, actually, yeah, I, 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 I do play better. It's kind of like um, if you have a young child in the family uh, and the parents of that child see, see that child grow up every day, grow, grow a little bigger each day. Uh, it might be a case that you only see that child maybe a couple of times a year. And, and, and what's your first reaction on seeing that child for the first time in six months? We all do it. Oh! how much you've grown you're much bigger the parents will say is he they see that change every day you've not seen that change for six months and it's exactly the same thing with you're playing you hear yourself playing every day you may go through a bit of a lull and you think oh, i'm not really getting anywhere with this take a listen back to what you were playing six months ago and i guarantee you you'll, you'll it'll make you smile so we'll look at recording in two formats. On all of our digital pianos, we have a file called a MIDI file. Now that MIDI file has been around for 40 odd years. It's the definitive way of recording on a digital instrument. It's really easy. The file sizes are very small. They used to go onto floppy disks. So it's the definitive way of making a recording on all of our digital pianos and we'll look at doing that right now. For those of you who are beginners or those of you who are not so beginners, um, a recording facility I believe is really important. It's a great thing for practice more than anything. If you think about this logically, uh, the good teachers will always get you to practice right hand, learn the part, left hand, learn the part, then put it together. It's great in theory, but there's actually a downside to that because, of course, the right hand almost invariably plays the tune and most of us are right handed. So we're learning the bit that's nice to play with the hand that works the best. And that's great. But of course, when you come to practice left hand, that's the bit that you really don't recognise because it's the accompaniment played with the hand that plays less well. And, and so that can be a bit of a bind to practice. It's not really very fun uh, and it's quite hard work. So let's make this better. Using the recording facility on board this Yamaha Arius, I'm going to record my right hand practice.
And now when I practice my left hand, I'm going to play it to the recording of the right hand. Now isn't that so much more fun? But not only is it more fun, which of course is why we do all of this, but it's more efficient too. Because when you practice your left hand and listen to the right hand as well, so you fix them together, you already know in your mind's eye that when you come to play both parts yourself, you know that that left hand part fits with the right hand part because you've already done it. More fun, more enjoyable, more efficient. Great news. Now MIDI files are incredibly useful things to have because not only are they ideal to, to have as a, a very, very quick notepad recording like we've just done there, uh, but they're also very, very useful for manipulating. Uh, for example, if you have either a PC uh, with a music program on it or a, 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 an Apple Mac, um, again with, it, with an application on that, or maybe even an iPad, those applications will read a MIDI file. It's an industry standard file. And for example, if you've made a mistake, you can edit that mistake out. A MIDI file basically looks like a spreadsheet. It's just, it's just a whole list of all the notes that you played. And just like on a spreadsheet, if there's anything on there that's wrong, you can just delete it. It's also really useful for maybe uh, printing your own music out. So you could make a, a sheet music, a piece of sheet music, from one of your own compositions, maybe one of your own recordings. It's a really, really useful format. On some of our digital pianos, we have voices that you really maybe wouldn't expect to find on a, a piano. Uh, for example, in this, in this next thing I'm going to show you, we're using a sound of the acoustic bass. Now, obviously, if you play the acoustic bass as a piano, it sounds pretty horrible because the acoustic bass will only play one note at once. So let's look at recording the acoustic bass and then playing the piano back over the top. Let's see what happens. There's a downside to MIDI files, unfortunately, and that actually is at the heart of why we have on Clavinova instruments another format which we call audio file recording. Audio files are the kind of things that you listen to maybe on CD or, or if you're streaming from, from the internet, even if you're listening to digital radio, you're listening to audio recordings. The benefit with an audio recording is that the, the sound is exactly the same. It's the same quality as you played on the instrument that you hear in its final place, in its final destination. 
Uh, a MIDI file doesn't do that. A MIDI file is entirely dependent on what you play it back on. So let's say, for example, um, if you have friends and family abroad uh, or away, if you send them a MIDI file, you know, Auntie Mabel in Adelaide, uh, you send her a MIDI file, here's been playing my, my new Yamaha digital piano. And that MIDI file then she plays back on her rather elderly PC, the laptop, it's using the piano sound in her computer. It's not using the piano sound that you've got in your digital piano. So the end result is she hears you playing, but she hears you playing her old piano sound inside the PC. And of course, then Auntie Mabel thinks, well, that doesn't sound very good. Sounds like a bag of spanners. Well, it will do because it's using the sound engine inside her computer. If you send Auntie Mabel an audio file, the story is completely different because the audio file records the music, it records the sounds. And in that case, she plays that back on her PC and it sounds exactly the same as it did when you recorded it on your digital piano. And that makes a huge difference. As we're sitting at the wonderful CVP805, uh, for this audio recording, let's enjoy some of the styles and the sounds on board this instrument. Um, as a rule of thumb, whenever you're recording, be it a MIDI file or an audio file on a little Arius or one of our big CVP instruments, the, uh, the, 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 the procedure is the same. In as much as get yourself settled, Choose the sound that you want to use, be that piano or electric piano, or we're going to use guitars and harmonicas and all sorts of things on here. Get everything ready. Remember, if you're using um, audio recording, if you're going to make an audio recording, then you will need a USB stick. Having a USB stick already inserted into the instrument before you start to record. You don't need that for MIDI files, you do need it for audio recording. Once you've got everything ready, the, audio, the USB stick is inside the instrument, at that point then, press record. Just at the point where you're ready to play. The last button you should press before you start to play is record. So let's show you the procedure for recording audio file on this CVP Clavinova. It's slightly different on CLP, um, but just follow your owner's manual. It makes it very, very clear. We, we, we can't kind of show you how everything works, but here's a really good example of how it works on CVP. CLP is slightly different, but as I say, just take a look in your manual.
much fun is that? Uh, <laughs> great. Um, that USB stick now holds the audio recording that we just made. And the great thing with that now is that that can go into your PC or your um, Apple Mac. And, and you can either email that if it's small enough, generally anything less than 20 meg. You're looking at uh, about 10 megs a minute um, with a WAV file recording. So, you know, one minute is 10 meg, two minutes, 20 meg, and so on. Uh, so you may find that your a, a long recording is too big to email. That's easy. Um, this is a broadcast quality WAV file that we have that we have here, um, but with iTunes, which you can um, you'll you'll find that on your um, MacBook, MacBook Air, um, MacBook Pro. If you if you're an Apple uh, person, if you're a PC person, then download iTunes, it will work on PC, it's a, it's a brilliant um, just sort of general music program, but that has a facility to um, convert WAV files into MP3s. MP3s are generally about only a quarter of the size. You don't really lose any quality recordings and that means that you can send quite big files, you know, five, ten, five, ten minutes long, um, to Auntie Mabel in Adelaide or whoever, and she'll then enjoy to hear you playing your instrument as you hear it, and that's really important. I hope this session's been of interest and it's inspired you to have a go. That's the main thing about all of this, all the things that we'll do together, all the things that I'll show you, just have a go. The worst thing that you can do is make a horrible noise, and I've been making a career out of that for the last 40 years. <laughs> I'll see you soon. All the best.